Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Last night I found a wonderful place called Sidewinder Road. It's a BLM camp right here in the inside of California. Just a little bit. I have something that we're going to go do today but I wanted to share with you what my views look like today versus what they looked like last night. This was one that I definitely recommend. I found it on iOverlander and I think you'll like it too. see there's plenty of room out here for tons of people so you can come out here and really spread out in fact this is my neighbor way over here and I didn't hear a peep out of them and I'm, I'm hoping they didn't hear a peep out of me either so uh, anyway let's hit the road we're off to our adventure and we're going to the center of the world We are now in Felicity, California. Felicity is a very small community that is right off of the major highway here in California. It is fabulous though because they have something that is absolutely amazing. They have the Museum of History in Granite and also the Center of the world. This is two very cool stops within one specific place. We're about to go in and check it out. It is $5 to come out, but $5 well spent. So let's go check it out. Okay, any visit out here starts with the gift shop. That's where you come in to pay your $5 mission. But then they also have a video and immediately the grounds start giving you some super cool things. But before we go out and explore, I do want to show you a couple of really neat things they have in the gift shop that might just pique your interest. You know I like a good postcard, but these postcards are pretty unique. You'll notice that they look like they are etched on granite. These are actual etchings from the walls that we're about to go and explore. And I think you can see by these that they are very, very detailed. I mean, look at this. This is fabulous. But if you're really into it, they actually have something even more exciting. I have found so far three of these. This one's the History of Humanity and it shows you the actual etchings from the walls. So you don't have to take pictures of each and every one of them. You can actually come in here and just purchase a high quality copy so you can take it with you and continue your learning even beyond this site. This thing is so cool. And just kind of give you an idea as to what to expect to see here also, there's this right here. You'll notice it has several different photos on it. You can actually purchase a piece to put in to the ongoing installation. It is really neat and I'm really, really amped up now to go outside, so let's go. We will start our tour today in the front and this is actually called the Arm of God. This is a three-dimensional sundial which not only tells you what time of day it is but it points toward a very specific place on the property. This is actually recreated using the inspiration of Michelangelo and his Arm of God and I thought it was super cool that when I came out here there was actually a little bird sitting on the finger. If that's any indicator as to what to expect whenever we go back here, I can't wait. It's going to be super fun. I can already see from the position that we're currently standing in this massive pyramid. And beyond that, there is actually a church on a very large hill. We're going to get a legwork in today, guys. It's going to be a lot, but it's going to be super fun. And I definitely say if you're coming here, allocate at least a couple of hours if you're wanting to really absorb the information. So uh, let's keep going. Now believe it or not, this was actually at one point in time a part of the Eiffel Tower. In 1983 it was removed and it somehow made its way to California to be here as a part of this wonderful display. You can see the wear and tear and you can only imagine the stories of the people who might have gone up this staircase at one point in time to get to that beautiful view. 
Now this particular section was actually standing from the late 1800s until 1983. It is estimated that millions walked up and down this winding staircase. So it's crazy to see it here in the middle of the desert of California. This place is very unique and very interesting and I think that kind of as you see it, it almost looks like a mirage coming out of the, of the sand. It's, it's really neat. But this is just the beginning. We haven't even made it over here yet. That's where we're going next. Okay, so without further ado, it is time for us to go and physically see the center of the world. I am so hype about this because the center of the world isn't just like anything that you'll find just everywhere. In fact, it's in this pyramid and we're going in and then we're gonna see that and just be blown away and then we're gonna go explore all of the granite. I am really excited about the granite after hearing the history of it, so this will be super fun. Let's go and see the center of the world, guys. Okay guys, as you can see, we just went to the official, and this is the actual official center of the world. Now, how did this happen? Why is the center of the world in California? That is a very good question, and it comes from a very unique story. You know I like my stories, so I had to get the scoop, and the center of the world was actually recognized first at a more local level. The man who owns all of this property, he and his wife had this grand vision, and they started off with a few really creative projects, but one of the things they really wanted to do was to name this the center of the world. They got the neighboring community of El Centro to actually like officially say, yeah, you can be that, that's cool. And by doing that, that meant that somewhere in California that they were officially accepted. Now, the owner of the property has ties to France. So his next step was to gain legitimacy on a more worldwide platform. He was able to do so by getting France to recognize that California and El Centro had in fact recognized this as the center of the world. And from there, the rest is history. The UN decided that definitely this would be in fact marked as the center of the world and now we are standing here in the official place that it all took place. But that's only the beginning of the story. There are walls upon walls upon walls of granite that are going to tell us the history of not only flight, the world, humanity, animals, and individual states. It is fabulous to know how much knowledge you can gain out here. It is literally walls of encyclopedias and we are going to go exploring. You know today we're getting some brain wrinkles guys so buckle up let's go. Now along each one of these walls we'll find different themes. For example, right here we're actually looking at the class of 1949 from Princeton. Right next to it we have the Hall of Fame of Parachuting. Now there's kind of a little bit of an interesting story behind the parachuting also. The man who physically had this as a dream, he actually was from France and he actually worked within the military and parachuting was kind of his thing. So it's not surprising that there is a wall that has the history, the Hall of Fame, and all of the cool, interesting information about that particular one specific thing. But as I'm looking, this is way more in depth than anything I would have ever, ever thought would be here. For example, right here we actually have some of the 2012 nominees all the way down to the 2016 nominees. But then, 
On these walls, you can also find a variety of the significant American parachuting organizations. And some of these are pretty awesome. Look here, we have the Navy Shooting Stars. We have the Golden Knights. And on this wall, even NASA makes the cut because guess what? NASA actually uses parachute exploration as part of their space program. But even more exciting, they have the Women's Success in Parachuting and it has several different photos which have been etched onto these walls to tell the story of women in the sky. Now as we pass by these walls, this is still the history of parachuting. In fact, it goes several, several plaques here. And again, this is just one subject. There are hundreds of subjects here covered. And initially, the reason why they wanted to leave this as their legacy is so that it can be a truly evolving piece of history where people can come and seek knowledge and learn amazing things. And again, this is right up my alley, something I totally enjoy, but there's more. Here we have the history of French aviation. Remember I told you before that the man who is in charge of all of this is tied in with France? Well, that would make total sense as to why there is a complete wall of French aviation history. And the graphics on this are beautiful. These etchings are done by hand for the most part, and they are absolutely amazing. As you look at the different pieces, you can see the hard work that's actually going into each and every one of these, and how many countless hours it would have taken to create some of these many scenes. Look at this one down here, for example. Wow, that is just beautiful. In fact, as we move around, you'll see a little bit later back, they're working on a new set of walls. The artist isn't here today, however, her station is still set up, so we'll be able to see that. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, French aviation, so many cool facts. And the thing I think I like best about this is it's not only available in the English version, but also the French version. So someone could come here literally from France and be able to have something written in their own text, which is awesome. Oh no, difficult decisions. Do we go see animals of the world or planet Earth first? Oh no, oh no. I have to say the panda's calling my name, so to animals we go. Wow, just wow. We start off at the very beginning of animal kind. We start off with dinosaurs and it says here, right above that 99% of all species that ever lived are said to be extinct by scientists. That is an insane number. Some of those that would have been extinct would have been the woolly rhinoceros, the Irish elk, the woolly mammoth, the dodo bird. So not only does it cover things that are currently going on, but also things that have gone on. I think you're starting to see the trend here. This is fabulous. And as we kind of move down, it tells us about what kind of animal that we're looking at, what their species name is, and then a few facts about them. Wow, there are so many animals on this wall. I don't think we're gonna to get to all of them. That means you're gonna to have to come out and check them out. It, it's so cool. It's like science class, but like in a really neat way. Like here's one about dogs. It says dogs guide the blind, detect bombs, herd sheep and cattle. They assist hunters, they pull sleds, they rescue humans, and they have been our companions for over 15,000 years. And then as you can see here, you can see the smallest dogs, the tallest dogs, dogs at work. It's just so neat. It even goes into the differences between animals like this, the zebra. It cannot be domesticated, unlike the horse, which is right next to it, right over here.
Now you'll notice along this wall right here, there are some blank pieces that have a few things kind of at the top and the bottom, but otherwise are kind of unfinished. These are some of the pieces that they're actually still working on. And what they do is they get them set up so that they can start on them and then they take their time so the art can be just right and perfect. For example, this one about the earth is not quite finished with the actual photos, but they have gone ahead and put some of the information on it. For example, in 2020, did you know that there were 1.1 billion people in the world that spoke Mandarin Chinese? We also learn about the water cycle here and how it works and why it's so important. Now just to uh, kind of put this in perspective, all of what we just learned were on two walls. <laughs> This place is vast. This place is awesome. And I see something over here that I don't know what it is. Let's go check it out. We now visit the history of humanity. And on the end of each one of these, you'll also notice there's a little quote or a descriptor as to what you're going to be seeing. I think this is fabulous. The history of humanity includes everything from ancient religions, maps, languages, people, photos, independent political movements. A little bit of everything is included on these walls and you can literally read it like a history book. Verbatim, some of these things I remember learning in history class, but it's just really neat to see them in this capacity because it puts them in sequential order so you can kind of see how everything played into the next thing in such a visual way. This is definitely a place that you come if you're wanting to have that visual representation of pretty much anything. It's really, really neat. So as we're kind of going, we learn more and more and then we get to like something like the Vikings where you have this really cool Viking ship and you even learn about the horn that they might have used on these. Fascinating. Even something like this, porcelain, it was perfected by incorporating translucent materials, quartz, and field spar. And that all happened as part of the Chinese innovation period began. Not only do they have biblical references, but they also have references from the Quran here. And you can see how the language looks and what it means. Original trading routes are on some of the sequences. The history of the introduction of games. And this is fascinating because it is how languages have evolved and created these subsets within each different entity. I think the thing we can take away from these particular walls is despite the fact that we might have very different background stories, we all have commonalities that kind of come together and they've stemmed from very similar things. In fact, the more that you look at these walls around here, the more that you start to see that fabric of humanity start to blend together and what has made us exactly who we are and in this moment where we are. It's just pretty cool. I mean, you would never think that coming to a place like this, it would be so clear and concise because typically when you see memorials or monuments, it's just focused on one very specific thing that you may or may not identify with. But here you can find something that you chime in with and definitely, definitely it makes sense. Here we learn about how money actually made its way into the mainstream and what it looks like before versus how it evolved into what we more know it to be now. Down here we go from the Greeks to the nomads to early Japan, early literature, Hinduism, and the seven wonders of the ancient world. We learn about the origins of the Great Wall of China and Alexander the Great. What the earliest music might have looked like and what they've discovered over time. How different kinds of instruments were born and the history behind them. We learn about early India and Africa, how the European areas started to blossom and bloom. And then this has to be one of my favorites visually. It is the Great Pyramids and the temples in Egypt. Other ancient civilizations, we learn a little bit more about where they were found and what we learned about them from their ruins and different little items that we may not have been taught necessarily in history. 
The walls even touch on the Ten Commandments and the earliest concepts of law, and then the rise and fall of empires over 5,000 years. On my channel, we've been to a lot of different places where there was mining, but this is actually the art of metallurgy, and that's where they turn all of the different things that they would find into different unique items. And that started well before mining here in the US. More of the earliest writing. You can find what each one of the symbols mean and then also some of the different characters that they might have used. Then something else absolutely fascinating is it not only tackles the religious explanations for things but also the scientific. So you have all the information so you can make your own judgment that way. I love that. I think that that's great because often when you go to places they're either all science or all religion but very rarely are they both represented together in a way that is so easy to navigate so you can kind of get the whole story and I think that that's really cool and in addition we move down here and we see more of like the planets the moon the Sun fascinating well done and absolutely beautifully put together and aesthetically very pleasing and I think that that's just the joy of this place really you come you expect one thing and at each wall you are absolutely blown away by the things that you didn't think would be here. As we are here in the history of humanity, I love this quote. During epic disasters, one learns there is more to admire in human nature than to despise. Albert Camus. But that doesn't mean we're finished yet. No, no, no. We have a lot of walls to look at. But first, we're going to take a brief intermission. Or shall I say, a brief jog to the top. We've made it to the stairs portion and this is my workout for the day. And you're coming with me. If I'm huffing and puffing, sorry guys. That's just my Texas lungs. Okay, we made it to the top and look at all of this. This is amazing. Now, something else kind of cool that I learned while I was here is that this is only the beginning, right? Wild, there's so much work that's been put into this, yet this is just the beginning. The people who actually own this property own all the way back to the mountains behind us over here. And eventually they hope to make this into a very nice little community with this central area right here, which is awesome. So I will be coming back here at some point in the future certainly but for now we made it up to the top let me show you this immaculate church building it's kind of crazy up here we have the best vantage point we have a really cool building i don't know what i'm gonna do with myself Just behind the church, this is all of the property that they own currently. There is so much that can happen on this space. And just over there, we see the maze that we will also be going into in just a couple of moments. It's like a labyrinth, but it has individual plaques that you can actually purchase one yourself if you'd like to be a part of the installation. In fact, those little squares that we saw inside the gift shop earlier, those are $100 and you can have a photo of yourself or a family member etched on there and a small message or their name. And that will remain a part of the maze for years and years and years to come as a part of the living history that continues to evolve here. So that's super neat. Let's go down and finish looking at the walls and then we'll head over and I'll show you a little bit more about that. We have finally got to the section where the artist is actually set up to work still and some really cool stuff here. I want to show you kind of what the process looks like. And again, all of this is hand etched. So it takes quite a bit of time to do each and every one of these, but this is where it all starts. 
Okay, right here we have one of the empty squares and up just a little bit above that we actually have a couple of points of reference. This allows them to better get an idea as to what is going to go in each box. And you can see here that this one is actually taped physically onto what looks like one of the boxes for size. So that's what that all starts out looking like, but there's more. Here we have a couple of other ones that they're currently working on also. And again, there are some little boxes that are available. And then what they do is figure out about what they want and then the size, and then they cut it to fit so that it ends up being one of these. The artist would sit in a chair like this and work with a little tiny, what looks like drill device over here and they would make their mark until they are completely finished using a variety of different pressure techniques and then we would end up with these gorgeous walls like we have right here. Now can you personally imagine sitting there for hours on end working on a little tiny block? Well that little tiny block has a lot of detail in it but can you imagine blocks that are this size? This guy right here has to be almost three feet across and one and a half to two feet tall. And look at all of the extra small details that have gone into creating him. That is a lot of work right there. But maybe not as much work as this, which has variety of different people, a lot of different animals, tons of different techniques that have had to go into etching this. And you can see even the little tiny pinpoints that they've used. That would take a very long time. But of course, those are just two examples. Let me show you some more. The walls are amazing. And especially in this section, there's a lot of larger pieces with super tiny fine details. It's just mind blowing. Now, as you can see, the history of humanity encompasses a lot, but also included are the amazing works of others. They've commemorated some of the biggest paintings that we've ever seen out here. For example, Mona Lisa, the crucifixion, David, all of these things are things that otherwise we may not be able to see in person because they're so far away. But here they have a lasting place to remind people of what exactly they look like why they're important, and also the amazing work that's been put into them. And I think that that's fabulous. I think that places like this definitely, definitely have a place for us all. Again, I've talked about that on the other side over there. We find things that we relate to and it's fabulous. But coming out here and being able to see that they've truly appreciated all of these different aspects of the human process and how we've come to be is really, really neat. Okay, we are off to see the maze now. We have finally made it to the outshoot sidewalk area for that and I'm just really, really excited because it's getting very large. And from a distance it doesn't look this big, but it is big, guys. It is big. Again, this is called the Maze of Honor and this is where people are able to either celebrate their lives or the lives of others through individual plaques. The real question is where do we start? Hmm. Now this being one of the newest expansions, they still have a lot of room to grow with this. But the cool thing about this is, as you're kind of going around and you're seeing all these different faces, people are honoring their families, they're honoring people that they know who have served. They even have some pets on here. I think that that is what is great about this. It's a capsule of the people who come here and want to participate. It's not just one set thing. It can be many things. And I think that we see that reflected in the eyes of these children from France right here. Or this family who's super excited because they came to visit the center of the world. This caption right here is priceless. Can I have this dance for the rest of my life? And it has their marriage date on it, which is so sweet. This couple celebrated their anniversary with some different photos of them and then also their favorite Bible verse. This person's family was so proud of her that they actually, instead of just framing her degree, put it here on the wall.
This is dedicated to the firefighters. Then something even more fascinating is I found this President Abraham Lincoln in this sea of open walls. But he isn't completely by himself because over there, over there, you see him? There's George Washington. Now the expanse of this space is pretty fabulous and I can only imagine that in the coming years when I come back, a lot of these walls will be filled. People are enjoying sharing their memories, their congratulatory moments, and just their family photos. And I think that this is a wonderful way to do that in a way that we will remember and honor those people for years and years to come. So yeah, maybe there will be in the future a Bunny Plays Here plaque. Hmm, huh, that's an idea. Now it only seems fitting that amongst all of these wonderful walls of history that there is actually a memorial as well. And here you can find the Korean War Memorial. Along this wall you'll find countless hundreds of names. And you can actually find people who might have been important to you and you can trace their name by the Crayola rubbings that they do. I think that that's fabulous that they've done this. And they actually did a big ceremony when they unveiled this wall. And you can see that on the video that they share at the very beginning of your tour. I highly recommend checking it out because not only do you hear the voice of the man with the vision, but you also see the progression of the different walls as they're being built. Really great seven minutes of your life that you will not want to miss for sure. Okay guys, that about does it here at the center of the world. It was fabulous. I have so many new brain wrinkles and I'm leaving with a catalog of things that are in the area and then also an official certificate for going and stepping foot on the center of the world. I am so psyched. I'm going to frame that whenever I get back to base camp and it will just be awesome. But remember guys, we are not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time and places like this definitely are a good time and I encourage you guys to come out. If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure that you leave a like, hit the subscribe button and check out the next adventure. I have something super cool planned and I think you're going to want to see it. Bye guys!